Alright guys, kind of at the end of the day here. Too much, it's too early to go home and too late to get into something heavy. So let's get into something heavy. There's a project that I want to do. Actually, uh, it's something I, re I really hope that I can figure out and do well with. Um, I want to start making steel uh, frying pans, <clears throat> cooking pans. So I've, I looked on YouTube and there's only a couple of videos out there and it's interesting, there's two totally different styles. Uh, in, in doing this. So anyway, that's what we're going to try to do today, or at least I'm going to attempt to. So I got some 14 gauge, which is what I saw being used. It's the heaviest stuff I have. In reality, when I get done, I want to use something heavier. Um, I want a little more meat in, into that pan. But for now, uh, 14 gauge. I cut a 12 by 12 thinking that it might give me a, let's see, 10 and like an 8 inch, 7 to 8 inch pan when I get done. That's what I'm thinking. But what I have to figure out now is how to cut this thing into a circle. And uh, I don't know yet. So. Let me go figure out what my plan is, and then we'll go from there. All right, this wasn't my original uh, plan, but I picked this disc um, rotor up, and it looks like it's just going to be just about right. My plastic cutter cuts about a half inch off the edge, and that's pretty damn close there. Uh, again, this is first time ever trying to do this, and I want to be able to do this and do it quickly. So I would, I would go get a piece of plywood and cut out a, a good circle in that plywood, and then use that as my as my plasma torch uh, guide. But I think I'll center this thing up on here, figure out how to get this thing lifted up so that I can cut on it, and uh, we'll cut this thing out. cutter in the right angle so uh, actually it's quite a lot better than I thought it was we're a little flat on this side but as a proof of concept I think we're good um, we are hopefully somewhere around 12 inches a little over 12 just less than an eighth of, oh, you can't see over over 12 so all right um, what do we want to do here let me think I mentioned it uh, in the little bit of research that I did I've seen two techniques being used one is where you kind of uh, crimp the pan like uh, scallop it around the outside and then take each of those humps and and upset the steel back together because as you curve that side up the uh, outside diameter of the flat steel um, gets smaller so it's got to be upset so you can create that curve um, I understand the concept of that it just seems like a heck of a lot of work the other uh, video that I saw um, he used the form he actually made a round bowl first I'll try to put the links down in, in the description so you can see the two videos that I'm referencing. Um, I, I looked actually today at, at the scrap yard trying to find something that had a bit of addition in it. Uh, I really couldn't find anything better than what I have here. This is a stump that I've used to work um, bowl, bowl shapes before for the pig project and for other projects. So uh, we're going to use this as our form. Again, just as this is proof of concept right now. See if we can go ahead and at least get something that is hand shaped project where these are or something like this is something you want to have for sure. There's a lot of radiant heat coming off of this thing. So you want extra gloves for sure. We're just trying to ball this up a little bit. Lock down a little bit. Just a few more bits here, see what happens. symbol. 
All right, so the thing to keep in mind is we're not really trying to drop the center. We're trying to upset the outer rim, shrinking the material by forcing it down in this groove. Again, we're trying to upset or shrink this outer rim uh, so that when we flatten this bottom back out, we can we have uh, we don't have waves in the thing. I think. Again, because I'm trying to upset, I'm trying to get a good amount of heat on this outside. so it wants to roll this outer edge. If that edge is hot enough, <laughs> you should be able to up, or, yeah, upset it. It's looking, it's looking like we're almost there. A little bit more. I don't know if crap out what I'm doing. doing is I'm hitting the center, working it out, it starts to roll this outside and I go ahead and flatten those out. Hopefully we're working that outer ring narrower in diameter. What do you guys think? Flatten the bottom and then work that outside? Let's give it a go. I mean that's all we got to do is learn, right? I took the uh, block down, I got the plate on top of this switch block. Um, I'll tell you what I'm doing ahead of time. I only want to heat the center part of that that bowl. I don't want the outsides to be hot because I don't want them to stretch as we flatten that center down. So I want to make sure that I isolate that heat and uh, we'll come back here on a flat surface and we'll just bring that bottom back down and we'll see what happens. That's the plan. I do this in one step. I'm upsetting the middle as we bring it in hopefully not rolling those edges out so there's this there's the start of it let's get another heat on there all right let's go a little farther
Right. It's out tool around on his mini bike, so I apologize for the noise, but it's the landlord. Can't do nothing about it. I'm thinking I like the way it looks. Um, again, if you don't, if you want a curved sided pan, I think you're ready to go. Just clean it up a little bit. I would really like to try to straighten it. Now, again, the two techniques that I saw is before you even put any shape into it, you wrinkle this and then you upside it together and wrinkle it and upside it together to pinch, basically pinching like you would a pie crust, pinching that around the outside. And that should um, upset that steel. And it may or may not be just as quick. So. Uh, we'll have to try that another time. Um, in either case, I think, well, in the second case, the, the guy made a bowl, all right, and then flattened the bottom like we did today. Then he went back and worked the rim, right, and he used the anvil for that. So I'm going to copy him just because I'm learning, um, and again, I'll give a link to his, to his video. Um, but he worked that cold, basically. So let's go ahead and work it cold. I don't know if it's against the rules to work something cold in Chandler's shop. Although you guys say I do all the time, huh? All right, hold tight. Just so you don't say I was capping somebody totally. And because I happen to have a piece of, I don't know, that's half inch friggin' steel laying around. Just a little bit of a taper cut on the inside, I don't know why. Piece of scrap. And because we got the forge going, let's go ahead and actually make, need a tool, make a tool. Let's make a, a little tool, just a bit of a curve on this that will go into the vise and that way I'm not copying his vise idea. I use this fight uh, likes to use the vices there's a bit of a curve there all right and that curve as you're hammering out your pan is uh it's pretty damn close to what that pan was flattened out to so um i mean it makes sense to do that uh so what we're going to do is just going to kind of match this this arc a little bit we'll weld a uh, piece down so we can clamp it in the vice and be done with it so you guys are getting a need a tool make a tool bonus uh once i get that piece curved i'll just weld this little uh, piece underneath it and we'll be ready to rock and roll so hold tight piece hot we're just gonna get her centered up right about in here so put the curve on it just enough to match Turn it around so we're doing the same on the other side the curve of that anvil over there or the uh, vice over there in reality you should be making one of these for each pan. So we're trying to kind of match the curve of the pan and be relatively flat. And I think I'm okay with what I am, except if you notice, 
the edge of this end will kind of bugger this thing out. So let's clean up those things. I certainly don't want to be transferring those score marks <clears throat> onto my pan. It'd be a wood grain pan. Perfect for sticking. You don't get it, wood grain pan will make things stick. Get it? Stick, wood. Don't fall. You fell, I told you not to. Alright, the rest of this will dress up with the uh, with the grinder. I think I'm okay with what it looks like. Alright, so we'll go ahead and tack this thing right here vertically if we can get it in the center. Get that down into the bike so we don't want a lot of buildup in that well. Hopefully, we're going to kind of finish everything's good. What I'm going to do now set this thing in this place. We're going to dress this top up a little bit. One, two, tool make a tool so there's a little I don't know call it a panning swedge lipping swedge we'll see so in the video that I saw the guy worked this cold which I don't have any experience working cold but turn down your, your, your earphones I'm sure this is gonna be loud we're trying to get it straight now Doggone. If it doesn't work, right here. Can't get it. Right. So we're curved here. We're going to a straight edge there. So I'll let me beat on this a little bit and I'll be back. Okay, so am I happy with it? No, I mean, I would never sell this, but I've learned a lot. First of all, uh, I think in, the, in the, this particular technique, we should have bolded a lot more than we did uh, to, uh, to upset this steel. Um, I'm gonna go back and try another one sometime with the upsetting, the, the scalloping around the outside first. Um, would I cook in this pan? Hell yeah, I would. So let me go ahead, uh, we'll get this cleaned up. Uh, I'll just do a simple, I'll forge it up quick, a simple flat stock handle on it. We won't do anything special and we'll just tack it on there with a welder and be done with it just because this is, you know, it's not proof of concept. We got some learning to do. Let me clean it up. I'll be back. I'm not going to do anything crazy tricky. I'm just going to drop this down and make a hook on the end so I can hang my pan. And then, like I said, I'm just going to weld it up. I'm not even going to rivet it. We will revisit this project again. Chandler is going to be a steel pan provider. It is my mission to be a steel pan provider. One more heat to put that hook in. Let's finish this hook up. And 
go back to another heat. I'm afraid I will. Sounds again. Sorry. Start off by going the wrong way. Turn around and go the right way. So you're happy with what you got. Try to make it so when it hangs, it's going to hang centered on the. in the sink right now. This one ain't going to mock. This little piggy stayed home. I'm looking down with that. Alright, that's fine. And the only thing we need to do is put a, you know, just enough of an edge on this uh, and a bend to uh, match the angle that we want. To See, while that's heating up, this shirt is looking an awful lot like a gold pan. It's been a long time since I've had my knees in the creek. Holy cow, time to get out there. Um, again, while it's heating, if you notice, I got a lot more lip over here than I have over here. Um, it's a little bit higher there, too. So when I clean this, this lip off, I'll try to bring that in. But again, this is. You know, the, uh, the, well, I'll do a recap at the end. But the bit, the bit, the bit. I'll tell you, we got more heat than we need to chew on that one. All you gotta do is put a little bend in it, dumbass. Anyway, so the handle's here, and we want to match the pan. So we want to bend it down. Oh, maybe not that. So that. When it's there. We get the right angle for the pan itself and the angle for the handle that we want, which I think we're doing okay. I think. I won't lie to you. See, I put a little curve in there because my sides aren't totally flat. So, from a welding perspective, actually, they are pretty damn flat. Let me get that. See, Charlie? Always underestimating yourself. So I think that'll weld up just fine right there, and I think that's a good angle. Right. I'm going to clean her all up, get her all done 100%, and then I'll be back and we'll talk about what we learned. Hey guys, interesting project. Uh, like I told you, I uh, saw a couple videos, and hopefully I remember I want to put the links to the, to the guys down there because it was very useful for information for me um, because I got to see a couple of different things, many of which I had already thought of, but I got to see them work. I guess that's the difference between their video and mine. I don't think mine worked totally, but that's probably the way yours are going to turn out the first time. So here's the frying pan as it is right now. Uh, it looks better on camera than it does in person. Uh, I'm, hey, it's my frying pan. It's going home. I'm going to use it. Uh, hammer marks. All right. A little cleaner on the hammering. Definitely want to do that. Uh, I'm a little wibbly wobbly on the top. The top is definitely too shallow for you know a multi-use frying pan. Uh, I like the handle. I think the handle is just sharp, just plain and simple. And, and uh, importantly, is that it doesn't tip over when you put when you set it down. All right, it stays right there. Because if you have too long of a handle or too heavy of a handle, you, it's or too small of a pan, your um, pan will tip. So, all right, guys, there's the project. I'm, I'm not totally disappointed. I kind of like it. It's a sexy looking uh, design with that handle. That's for sure. A little deeper, all right. If I was able to upset that steel a little bit more and get this, this the bowl should have been deeper. So that's the moral of the story right there. Um, start with a smaller pan. Don't start with a 12-inch freaking disc. Start with an 8-inch disc or something. Give yourself a chance to really be able to move that stuff. On my forge alone, uh, I couldn't heat the whole uh, dang pan uh, disc. You know, the 12-inch disc. So if I start with a 6-inch or an 8-inch disc, I'm sure, I wouldn't have had a very impressive pan at the end. But at least I would have learned what I learned and maybe I would have learned successfully. All right? I don't call this a total success, but I love it. It's my pan. I made it. All right? It did not come from overseas. Um, what else you need to know? I think that's pretty much it. Now, with a steel pan, and I'm not an expert, this is just a little bit of information I know. You're going you're gonna to want to season this. This thing's going to rust, right? 
So you're going to take, I use olive oil, just like you would cast iron pan. Wipe the thing down, a good coating of, uh, not fill it, just a good coating, all right, of oil. Throw it in the oven for, uh, at 400 degrees for, I don't know, half an hour, something like that. Take it out, wipe it down again, and repeat that process. You might let it cool a little, but then repeat that process uh, three times anyway, three or four times, and you'll get, you know, each time it'll get darker and darker, you'll get a lighter, you know, light, lightish, yellowish brown for the, in the first couple um, seasonings, and you can get as dark as you want, probably. Um, washing it, same thing with cast iron. People just say, you know, don't even bother washing, just wipe it out. Uh, if you do wash it like I do, I, don't, I like to wash the pans out. Um, just coat them in oil when you're done, put them back. And that's it, I love it. Now, I will be making more pans. This is a, this is a product that I want to be known for. So I'll, I'm, I'm probably gonna have more videos uh, about this, but hey, you know what? You guys give it a try. And hey, you need a pan, make a pan. Need a tool, make a tool. Need a girlfriend, oh. <laughs> Catch you on the next one. Bye.